Hey, hey, welcome to Advancing AI, where we talk all things AI and machine learning. Today, we're recording our final episode of the Graph Rag series. So I'm not going to delay any further. I'm going to have Chris back, and we're going to talk about all the series that we've recorded so far and give you a bit of our opinion in terms of how good really is Graph Rag, how difficult is it in terms of uh, implementation and functionality. So let's have Chris back on. Hey, Gavin. Hey, Chris. How's it going? I'm doing really well. How are you? I'm I'm sad and I'm excited. I'm excited that we're recording our final Graph Rack series. Um, no, I'm not fine. I'm not excited. I'm sad. Oh, that's all right. We've, there's plenty other subjects that we're going to talk about in the future. <laughs> yes, but it's been pretty cool. And I just wanted you back to just recap all the different episodes that's recorded so far. And we'll place the links to all the different episodes and the YouTube description. But yeah, we've done an introduction to Graph Rack where we touched on different terminologies. What else did we do, Chris? Episode two, we looked at like a high level overview of the blueprints architectures of implementing what we talked about in episode three, which is Llama index local implementation, Graph Lag, yep. Graph Rack, local yep. implement implementations. And then in episode four, we wrapped up with a local line chain implementation. All right. I've got a question for you, an opinion question. What was your favorite out of all of these four episodes? Ooh, good question. Um, probably the episode number four because of the visualization. I just, I'm, I'm a sucker for a good visualization. Okay. So my favorite episode was to really just understanding all the different architectures to do with graph rack and all the different options that gives, that just gave me a good understanding. And you have a lot, lot of options depending on which tech stack that you are wanting to implement and what you could go forward with, I think my number two was favorite. Yeah, I, I, I'm i glad you said that because the overarching goal of this series is to give you a good understanding of what's out there and try and help you form that opinion. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. Anyway, uh, moving on, let's just recap in terms of Graph Rag, right? Why Graph Rag? Why not just Rag, Chris? And we touched a bit uh, on two major points in our very first episode. Uh, generally, uh, Graph Rack offers higher accuracy and ultimately gives you the, um, it, it gets more useful answers from your corpus of data, right? Yeah, definitely. It gives you better answers is probably like a, a good way to explain it. Though Rag is a useful tool, if yeah. you want to, if you want to be very sure that it's picking up all of the semantic knowledge within your data yep knowledge yep. graphs are pretty good to do that and yeah. implementing them in a rag pipeline is pretty powerful as we've seen in a couple of the episodes yeah exactly right i think what you've shown through all those episodes um were the how 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 efficient graph rack was at connecting the dots that yeah. perhaps your baseline rag would struggle with yeah Definitely. And I think um I think in the Microsoft Graph Rag we particularly showed that when it could pick yeah. up the difference yeah. differences in those contracts. And also I came across a blog that talked about just the power of uh, graph rags and how on average it offers three times more improvement compared to your baseline rag. And we'll put that link to the blog as well. It's quite an interesting read down in the YouTube description below. So uh, yeah, have a have a have a read on the blog. Right, so now opinion time, Chris. Yep. So we touched the episode three was all about uh, Lama Index and Graph Rag, Microsoft Graph Rag. And I just wanted to touch on in terms of, you know, what was it good at? What was the what was the benefits and what was the drawbacks in terms of implementing Graph Rag in your opinion? Yeah, definitely. I, I agree with all of those statements at the top. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, particularly the integration within the Microsoft Azure ecosystem with the Solution Accelerator is a big selling point when it yep. when it becomes a little bit more, more mature. Yep. Um, getting that pumped into the cloud is, is going to be powerful. But then you've yep. got the the counter arguments, which are expensive in production, 100%. And the hard to visualize the graph is, is changing. I've seen a couple of notebooks come out in the last couple of days that really speed that up. Um, something yep. from YWorks particularly speed this up as well um, nice. but then then in the bottom right corner we're seeing seven 
seven dollars yeah. pages. That's, well, that's... yeah, yeah, that's quite a lot, right? So they within Microsoft's blog, they've recommended uh, the Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. It's it's sixty four pages. Uh, that, that's it. Just sixty four pages. And what they've recommended is in terms of going through the tutorial, try and get a graph network from this book, and then try and put, do some question and answers. And there's a really, really good YouTube video out there as well that talks about how that's been implemented. And that course comes up at $7 for 64 pages. So now if you're taking that into production, and if, you, you know, if you've got more than 64 pages that often you would do in the production environment, that course can soon escalate. Yeah, you'd really need to start looking at return on investment. Particularly yeah. in fraud, it's probably the most yeah. useful use case if you can save X amount from catching this fraud. Yeah. You're gonna it's a good yeah. value proposition. But um proof of concepts are probably expensive to run. What I'd like to caveat that is with I think the cost of your LLM models would tend to yeah. decrease anyway over time. It's not gonna be increasing. Just like today, you know, we had the announcement of GPT four or mini coming out, which is yeah. really, really cheap to use. So that seven dollars was based on a GPT-4 model, but you know we know we have other LLM models out there that can be more cost efficient. Yeah, definitely. The cost right. to, to do this will decrease. Yeah. So moving on to Llama Index, then Chris, what are your you know takeaways for implementing Llama Index? Probably the same as Langjane. There's okay. not going to be much difference between the two. Yeah. Um, Llama Index, particularly. They have a little bit more nuance with the query engine. You can either do it through Cypher or natural language. It gives you a couple of different options. I yep. really like that. Um, but the built-on best practices, yeah, yeah, it's it's built-on best practices. Just remember when you implement it, you need to keep those best practices in place in your code. Um, yep. The integration with the top three cloud providers, yeah, you could spin this up in any serverless environment that you needed. Yep. Uh, open source, always a winner. Always love, oh. love a bit of open source. Yeah. Um, yep. Hard to visualize, not so much as Microsoft Graph, but it's it's not as simple as Langchain, for instance. Over the last few days, actually, Chris, I've seen an implementation of Llama Index and Neo4j, so that might become a lot more easier as well in terms of yeah. trying to visualize Graph. Well, that's semi done it. Cool. And then we've got last implementation, Langchain, probably your favorite implementation. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to pigeonhole myself into any yeah, statements. Yeah, uh, yeah, the the white community adoption is definitely a selling point. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Most of the examples that I've seen have been with Langchain and AuraDB from Neo4j. Yeah, um, yeah. The on the integration with the top three cloud providers, I came across a really good article from. Neo4j, where they integrated into, they had solution accelerators for Azure, GCP, and AWS. So there, there's good adoption between the cloud providers for that as well. Good stuff. Um, and I've got two other, not so much of a difficult question, but opinion-based question in terms of ease of implementation and functionality. Yeah. Uh, I've had a guess in terms of how you would rank them, but would you agree with us ranking in terms of when it comes to implementation and functionality, in number one, the Llama Index, followed by Langchain and a Microsoft Graph Rack. Yeah, I I agree with you. So Llama Index to implement probably the most less like I'm basing ease of implementation on the less lines of code I had to write to <laughs> implement. It. Yeah, yeah. Um, which means you're just subtracting away a load of code that you don't necessarily need, and Llama yeah. Index has done that well. Um, yeah. Langchain, yeah, it was it was good. Microsoft Graph Rag was a trickier one because it was it's it's brand new. Yeah, it's yeah, it is. you had to figure stuff out yourself. Yeah, I think what was it a week in, and you know we were trying to already implement Graph Rag. So I I reckon with time that would just become more mature. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, the functionality Llama Index are up there, right at the yeah. top, just based on the fact that they've got different options for your query engine. It's, yeah, yeah. The Lang chain and Microsoft Graph Rack haven't done that yet, and that's that's just a major selling point. Good stuff. Lessons learned then. If if you had to provide your top tips in terms of you know you've done this, uh, you've had to learn how to implement Graph Rack, 
um, I've kind of summarized from our conversations that this will probably be your four top tips in terms of how to get started with implementing graph rag. So yeah, for some make sure you have a good understanding of that baseline graph rag. Yep. Make sure you understand that the workflow of taking documents, ingesting them, indexing them. And because yep. the next step of that is re is removing that indexing in some instances and using a graph database, yep. which is why you need to familiarize yourself with a graph database, how it works, yep. what Cypher query is, all of yep. that fun stuff that Graph Academy goes over quite well. Yep. If you want to start learning on that, but start small. Start with a small, small knowledge graph, definitely. Uh, a small set of documents. Yeah about something that you're interested in is probably the best thing to do because then you have the most pre-existing context when you yes. visualize that graph and yeah. get the answers. You know what it's talking about. You can yeah. think, oh, that makes sense rather than I genuinely have no idea of what's going on. Yeah, I suppose that validates trust as well, right? So if you, if you, you understand how it works and you know what it's meant to be providing you, then that, and if you're happy with the answers, then you're like, right, this works and I can, I'm really comfortable with this. Yeah, 100%. Then putting those three free steps into an end to end pipeline, going from ingestion to visualization to yep. query prompting, adding in chat history, making it a little bit more mature is, yeah, get comfortable with that before you move it into production. Yeah, they're all really, really good tips. Um, and and I guess in terms of in terms of resources to get started, now we've put together uh, quite a few resources here in, in terms of helping people. If you're interested to implement GraphRag, we'll put this all in the YouTube description. But out of all of those, my favorite, Chris, was the demo uh, with GraphRag where you can see how it performs versus RAG and ML2 Cypher. That was my favorite favorite demo yeah yeah that's, it's a good use case to show the power yeah. and the difference between baseline rag and graph rag definitely yeah. in terms of like if you would turn around to a client and show that they, yes. they'd understand that pretty quickly exactly right and we've got a couple more papers and in terms of gartner's impact radar for generative ai showing just how how important yeah. graph rag is and can be yeah yeah definitely 100 percent and Graph Rad Academy, just, just to give a, a notable mention, if you want to start from the basics and learn your way up, yep. head head over there. Even if you're not going to use Neo4j, it gives you a good understanding of graph theory and the basics you need for those graph databases and all of that fun stuff. Brilliant. And we'll put all the links down in the YouTube description. Um, I think that's it for now. What I'd love to know is, are you using Graph Rack in your projects? Are you thinking of implementing Graph Rack for any projects that are coming up in, in your company we would love to hear more about it and yeah put it down in the comments below that's, that's brilliant thank you gavin thank um, you chris in a whirlwind. <laughs> we'll see you soon i'm sure cheers brilliant bye